three fathers of rocketry, Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, who lived from 1857 to 1935. Tsiolkovsky is quoted as having said that the Earth is the cradle of humanity, but mankind cannot stay in the cradle forever. Tsiolkovsky is often called the father of spaceflight. He was born more than 100 years before Sputnik became the first object launched into space on the 4th of October 1957. Amongst his work are designs for rockets with steering thrusters, multi-stage boosters, space stations, airlocks, and closed cycle biological life support systems for space colonies. He is credited with inventing the concept of the space elevator. In 1903, Tsiolkovsky developed the Tsiolkovsky equation, which relates fuel use, exhaust velocity, and final velocity of a rocket. Tsiolkovsky calculated the velocity necessary for a rocket to obtain minimum orbit, 8,000 meters per second, and theorized about the use of liquid-fueled and multi-stage rockets to do so. Tsiolkovsky was influenced by the science fiction writings of Jules Verne. Hermann Oberth, who lived from 1894 to 1989, was a German physicist and engineer. Oberth was influenced by the science fiction writings of Jules Verne, especially the books From Earth to the Moon and Around the Moon. In 1927, Oberth developed the concepts underlying the Oberth effect, which describes how a rocket can produce more thrust at higher velocity as a result of the greater kinetic energy of the propellant. In practice, the gravity of a planet or other body is used to accelerate the spaceship, which fires its rockets at the point when it is closest to the body. Oberth tested a liquid-fueled rocket motor in 1929, which ran briefly despite lacking a cooling system, and in this he was aided by a young student who was working with him, Werner von Braun. Von Braun said of Oberth, I, myself, owe to him not only the guiding star of my life, but also my first contact with the theoretical and practical aspects of rocketry and space travel. Oberth worked with von Braun on the V2 project during World War II, and later under von Braun at NASA. Robert H. Goddard, who lived from 1882 to 1945, was an American engineer, professor, physicist, and inventor. Goddard's interest in rocketry and space exploration began when he read The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells at the age of 16. Early in his career, Goddard experimented with solid fuel rockets, improving the efficiency of these from the then common 2% to around 63%. Goddard experimented with liquid-fueled rockets in 1921 and successfully carried out static tests on a liquid-fueled rocket motor in 1923. Goddard launched the world's first liquid-fueled rocket on March 16, 1926. The rocket reached an altitude of 41 feet in 2.5 seconds. Following this first flight, he continued his experiments concentrating on improving the stability of his rockets. In 1929, he launched the first rocket to carry a scientific payload, a barometer and a camera. In 1937, Goddard achieved his highest altitude launch of 2,500 to 2,700 metres. Goddard's innovations included gyroscopic control, steering by means of vanes in the exhaust of the rocket motor, power-driven fuel pumps and multiple combustion chambers. Esnault Pelterie, who lived from 1851 to 1957, was a French engineer and aviation pioneer. Pelterie coined the term astronautics to describe spaceflight. He patented a system for thrust vectoring, and that was amongst 120 other patents that he took out during his lifetime. He carried out experiments with liquid and solid fueled rockets and also calculated the energies needed to reach the moon and nearby planets. O'Neill, who lived from 1927 until 1992. O'Neill was an American physicist who theorized about human colonies in space and suggested Lagrange points for these. He proposed the idea of using rotational gravity in space colonies. And finally, Werner von Braun, who lived from 1912 to 1977. Von Braun was a German rocket engineer and designer. He developed the V2 program 
for Germany during World War II, demonstrated gyroscopic stabilization on large rockets, and worked for the US Army after World War II, then for NASA, notably on the Apollo program. 